All right, guys, so for this example, what we'd like to do is compute the first and second derivatives of the cycloid. So the first thing that we should do is remember the parameterization of the cycloid. So the cycloid is parameterized by the angle theta, and the equations were that x is equal to r times uh, theta minus sine of theta, and the y-coordinate is given by r times 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, we worked this out. We derived these formulas in uh, a short video in the last notes. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch that, and you'll understand where these come from. Uh, what we'd like to do now is compute the slope of the tangent line at each point of the cycloid and compute the concavity, so d squared y by dx squared. So let's start with the derivative, uh, the first derivative first, so the slope of the tangent line, it's this one. And remember that the formula for this is pretty straightforward. This is just going to be y dot <coughs> over x dot, excuse me. We're here the dot derivative, so for example the y dot here means that we're computing dy d theta. So theta is the parameter here. The parameter is not t. Most of what we've done so far, the parameter has been t, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, It can be any parameter. In this case, theta is playing the role of the parameter. So let's just compute these two derivatives. So I'm, I'm going to compute y dot first because just visually, y dot is the numerator, x that's the denominator. And remember, r in this scenario, for this function, r is a constant. It's the constant radius of the circle. So when we take the derivative of y, we end up with r times the derivative of 1 minus cosine theta, but that's just 0 minus a negative, so plus sine of theta. <coughs> that's just r sine of theta. And then in the denominator, we take x dot, and again, compute this. This is r stays here. Derivative of theta with respect to theta is 1, and derivative of sine is cosine, so 1 minus cosine. When we put this all together then, the slope of the tangent line at each point on the cycloid, dy dx, is given by r sine of theta divided by r times 1 minus cosine of theta. And at this point we notice that there's an r in the numerator and denominator factored, uh, a factor in each term. Um, it can be canceled out. <coughs> and so our derivative, dy by dx, is just sine of theta divided by 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, so what we would like to do is now compute the second derivative. So we worked out a formula for this in the last notes, but I'm going to actually go from the definition here. So d squared y dx squared, this is the x derivative of dy by dx. Okay, but we just found a formula for dy by dx. Right, so this becomes then the x derivative, d by dx, of that formula that we just computed. So that was sine of theta over 1 minus cosine of theta. This term's, the red term in the inside of the derivative here is already parametrized. So now we just obey the parametric rules um, that we've used for the first derivative, which is we take the derivative with respect to theta of this sine of theta minus uh, over 1 minus cosine theta, and I'm going to write this like this with a dot here. That means the theta derivative. And we divide this by x dot. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we've already computed x dot. Just go back and look at it. x dot is r times 1 minus cosine of theta. And so there's that. On the top, we take the derivative of this thing. So now we're going to take d by d theta. This is the dot, right? of sine of theta divided by 1 minus cosine of theta. And this, of course, needs a quotient rule. So the quotient rule says that this is 1 minus cosine of theta times cosine of theta minus sine of theta times sine of theta. And on the bottom, we have 1 minus cosine of theta quantity squared. Now we want to multiply all of this out. This, sine, this cosine sorry, has to go to each term, but after it does that, we end up with a pretty nice formula here. So this becomes cosine of theta minus cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta over 1 minus cosine theta quantity squared. And of course, all this right here simplifies to just be minus 1. <coughs> Right, so this derivative ends up being 
cosine of theta minus 1 over 1 minus cosine of theta quantity squared. And this on the top, you can factor out a minus 1 and change the signs here. And then it's just the same as the bottom. So this whole term just becomes 1 over 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, that's the derivative of the top by itself. We have to divide by, don't forget to put this all together, divide by x dot. And so what we end up with, I'll go to the next page, but what we end up with is, oops, sorry. What we end up with then is that the second derivative, the concavity at every point of the cycloid, is given by, we just computed, the derivative of the top was 1 minus, 1 over 1 minus cosine of theta divided by x dot, which is r times 1 minus cosine of theta. <clears throat> and so we put this all together and we end up with 1 over r times 1 minus cosine of theta quantity squared. And this is our second derivative, our concavity of the cycloid at every point. Remember, r is a fixed constant, theta is the parameter here.